Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about switch forwarding methods. So to explain switch forwarding method, I have illustrated here this switch. I have taken this switch and this user is let's connect it with FA0 slash 1 port and this user is connected with FA0 slash 4 uh, port. So switch actually processes these switches or the switch actually handles these packets when one user wants to forward them to some other destination. So it processes it. So that is actually the switch forwarding methods. But there are uh, multiple switch forwarding methods. So first of all, uh, we will be discussing about store and forward switching, cut through switching and fragment free switching. So before discussing about any specific switching and uh, switch forwarding methods, let's discuss that in general what happens. So in general, let's say this user generates a frame. Let's say this user is connected with FA0 slash 1 and this is connected with FA0 slash 4 port. So this user generates a frame and that frame will have header, data and trailer fields. So in general, they will have these fields. But if you look in details, then that frame will have many more fields. Let's say this will have preamble and SFD, destination MAC address, source MAC address, type length field, data and FCS. So when this switch receives this frame, it will look for the destination address that where this switch needs to forward this uh, frame. And then switch maintains a table that is called MAC table and it will consult its MAC table and it will see if there is any address matching with the address which is in the destination MAC, destination MAC address field. And if it finds then it will simply select that particular port. So say at the moment it shows, it shows that the computer having this MAC ad address is connected with FA0 slash 4 and simply forward it to that particular destination. So this is what happens. And now in store and forward switching actually what happens so the same process will be done of course it will be looking for the destination mac address but for that switch will first receive the entire frame yeah so let's say these users are connected like this switch will receive the entire frame generated by this sender it will look at the destination mac address and it will also look another field look at another field that is fcs that is frame check sequence the first thing is that in a store and forward switching it will receive entire frame it will check for errors using cyclic redundancy check or crc and if there are any errors then it will drop that frame and it will not forward to this destination so that's important that it will receive the entire frame check for errors if there are errors it will drop the frame and it will not forward to the destination and this is the primary lens switching method used by Cisco. And in other uh, switch forwarding method that is cut through switching. In this switching method, let's say again, these users are like connected like this. So in this method, the entire frame is not received. So switch will not wait for the entire frame to be received. It will only wait for six bytes. So in that it will have it will look for the destination MAC address and uh, it will not check for any errors as soon as it has received the destination MAC address it will uh, consult its MAC table and it will start forwarding that frame to the destination so in this case if there are there is no error checking it means if there are any errors in the frame even if there are any errors in the frame I mean that the, the switch will forward the frame so that is something. So the advantage is that uh, the switch doesn't have to wait for the entire frame to be received. It will simply look for the destination MAC address and forward it. And, and this is not the primary lens switching method by Cisco. And uh, the third, which is fragment free switching. This is basically a trade off between, between store and forward and cut through switching methods. So in this case, switch will not be waiting to receive the entire frame. It will wait for the first 64 bytes of frame. And then, uh, and then these 64 bytes, they most probably like they have the source address, destination MAC address and some control information. And then it will check for errors in these 64 bytes, which, which a switch has received. It's not receiving the entire frame, but only 64 bytes and it will check for errors. And if there are errors, then it will be dropping the frame and it will not forward the destination. Let's say this one. 
and uh, uh, in this case you can see it is receiving more than six bytes but not the entire frame it is receiving only 65 so 64 bytes of the frame and checking for errors if there are errors it will drop it if there are no errors then it will be forwarding it so that is fragment free switching and that's it i think so yeah so we the logic behind uh, um, behind receiving and processing 64 bytes is that uh, that most collisions and error errors they occur only in in like in most probably like they are occur in first 64 bytes of a frame and if in, in in probability says that like statistically is found that if there are no errors in first 64 bytes hopefully there will not be errors in the rest of the frame so that's it that was the last last uh, switching method we wanted to discuss so we discussed about uh, uh, store and forward switching cut through switching and fragment through switching and i hope this may be useful some for some of you and uh, thank you thank you very much for your time hope to see you have a next